Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today and to be talking about out of home and out of home, particularly as the identity landscape changes and in a cookieless world. My name is Belinda Smith. I'm the CEO of the Americas for M6, which is a full service media agency um, under the group M Umbrella. So I think where I always like to start this conversation is a little bit of context, which is the crumbling of the cookie has been happening for quite a long time. And I think it's always useful to evaluate the changes in the identity landscape, not only in the context of the recent Google announcement, but thinking that we actually have a lot of precedents for this, whether it is GDPR, e-privacy initiatives, CCPA, there have been a continuous change and I would say shift and degradation of that the identity landscape over time. Uh, what's interesting now is I think we are seeing those moves accelerate as there's a continued focus on consumer privacy, but it's helpful to understand that in many ways we've always been preparing for a bit of a cookie-less world. Um, the, the funny thing about what's happening now is, again, we accelerate and see even more of our media impressions coming um, without identity data is we're starting to think about how do we target in this world and how do we stay relevant and how do we fulfill that promise of right time, right message to right consumer. And one thing that has bounced back uh, resoundingly has been the return of contextual targeting. We've seen a lot of discussion, not only of what identity might look like going forward, but actually of the relevance in contextual targeting given the loss of identity. And I think this is always interesting to bring up, but especially in the context of out of home discussions, because out of home are, is probably uh, the number one contextual opportunity in being able to place messages or ads or experiences, um, again, in context of where people are situated, where they're engaging in specific activities or where they are most likely to be. And not only is out of home really strong for contextual, but out of home has been useful um, in providing data signals that have al always been privacy friendly and privacy centric. If we think about one of the earlier promises of out of home and the emergence of digital out of home and thinking about using mobile data for out of home, it was foot traffic. So being able to understand down to times of day, um, places where traffic was heavier, um, understanding a little bit more about the audiences that were using those spaces at what time, and really making our, our out of home bias smarter and work harder for us by giving that additional context. Uh, that also allows us to think about dynamic creative, especially in a digital space when we think about digital out of home opportunities. How do we update the messaging to make it relevant given what we know is happening either in the world during that time or again what we know about how audiences are moving through a space and how we might want to be able to tailor messaging as that's happening. The out of home has also always been unmatched as far as having impressive formats and being able to strike awe and command attention. And I think we are, you know, continuing to see an innovation in the types of formats that are available in the out of home space as we think not only about digital, but about AI and machine learning and how that interacts with out of space as out of home spaces as we think about um, cameras and sensors and our ability to create some really interesting and unique experiences um, outside of the home. And then lastly, programmatic has been something that has taken over, uh, I would say the entire industry to be sure, but whereas programmatic has been more dependent on identity or on cookies in let's say a digital display type of way and out of home programmatic has done wonders to really bring scale to the market and has allowed us to really think about 
constructing truly national buys and national reach programs in out of home spaces. And not only doing that through one type of inventory um, opportunity, so not only doing that through billboards, but being able, as we like to say, to have a surround sound effect with our audience and show up um, in places outside of the home um, in a unified way and at programmatic scale. So, you know, even as we see the identity landscape changing within other areas of digital, out of home still remains, I think, pretty best in class as far as the ability to deliver context, to deliver information about the ads that we're buying and to deliver scale and to do so even as the identity landscape kind of crumbles beneath us in some ways. Um, the, the other thing I will say is that I never thought we'd get to this moment, but as people are starting to come out of COVID, um, getting vaccinated, the weather's getting nicer and people are really kind of reawaking, people are missing this experience. Uh, people are missing being out in large groups together and people are ready to get back active in return to you know, what the next normal will look like. And we see out of home as playing such an important role in that for our clients. Um, there's not one client conversation that I'm having right now that doesn't include out of home because it is the, the energy and the resilience of our shared spaces and our cities returning um, and people really wanting to be out into the world and to have unique experiences or creative and dynamic messages. And so we're seeing lots and lots of opportunity within this market um, that to be sure has always been there, but I think we're seeing renewed interest and excitement from the advertiser side. So I'm really excited to be here today and to talk a little more um, about how that's showing up across our business and some others as well. Thank you so much, Belinda. That was that was great and really, really interesting. Um, what most people uh, on this conference might not know is that we were actually colleagues at the IAB many moons ago. Uh, feels feels like forever ago, but but it really wasn't that long. Um, and but when we both worked together and during your tenure uh, at the IAB, I, I really vividly remember a paper that you were working on uh, about a post cookie world. I think it may have been in 2014 um, or somewhere around there. Uh, so you've been you've been thinking about these issues longer than I think most people, um, and 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 really know this inside and out. So, as things are now unfolding, uh, are, are they unfolding the way that you thought they would be back then? And what's surprising you the most? Ooh, that's a great question. I think there, are, I think I probably have two key takeaways. One is. Um, first of all, you and I work together in the mobile center, so I get to make the year of mobile joke. Um, the year of apocalypse has felt exactly like the year of mobile in that every year we expect it and it kind of never quite lands. So I would say the first thing is I'm surprised it took us this long to get to a point where we're saying, okay, like this is the cutoff um, because it was 2014. And yeah. I think the second thing is when we wrote when we wrote that paper and approached that work, it was through the lens of the industry very proactively looking for innovative solutions on how we would address consumer privacy concerns. Um, and I think the assumption there was really that as an industry, we were going to push ourselves to be forward thinking in that space. And what has played out actually is that there has been um, legislation that has forced that innovation back on us. So I think, and I think that's probably connected to it taking a little bit longer than we thought. So I think those are the, the two things that I didn't get quite right in those days. Yeah, no, it was, I, I remember even then it was a very touchy feely topic and, uh, and an interesting ride to, to get that paper created, probably still out there somewhere. Um, but 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 interesting and and dates both you and me a little bit. Um, so so but let's let's move back to to out of home for a second. So again, you know, when it comes to out of home as a, as a as an advertising platform, I think we both agree that our core capabilities are well suited to help marketers given the landscape we're in today, and everything that's happening. Uh, Non-interrupted contextual opportunities are especially big for out of home. We are a contextual medium in many ways, so so we can be in the right place at the right time. Um, but it's not always easy for us as an industry to uh, to get credit for the business outcomes. 
what are marketers looking for when it comes to looking at things like attribution and retargeting in a post cookie world and and how can out of home make sure that we that we get you know credit for the outcomes that we can create yeah absolutely i think uh, in my mind, there are kind of two trends coming together that are fueling measurement, the measurement conversation. One is privacy. And so we've talked about privacy as far as cookie and identities. But as you know, mobile location data, which has been a big enabler of measurement in the out of home space, I think probably has its own privacy transitions and considerations that it will go through. Um, and the other is a lot of the brands we're working with now are really trying to better understand and quantify the interplay between above the line awareness brand media and then their kind of last mile performance response media. Um, Because of the changing identity landscape, many of those like multi-touch attribution solutions are either having to be rethought or are potentially going away. And we're actually seeing a return to market mix modeling, uh, longitudinal econometric studies, and marketing finding and marketers finding ways that they can blend all of their touch points and all of their media together to to really understand the impact. And I again think that that is something that really benefits out of home because there's a way to um, measure and prescribe value that isn't reliant on a one to one measurement model. Um, And essentially, a lot of marketers are having to walk away from one to one. And so I think the ability to um, proactively communicate value through a privacy safe way, and of course, saying, you know, this is future proofed against identity, because it doesn't rely on identity is going to be a big value add for marketers this year and going forward. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. It's actually a big, uh, big focus of us, uh, of ours at the OAAA this year to start laying a foundation for, for just that uh, MMM, MTA. And, and, you know, we're doing quite a bit of research and committee work around it. So, so that was very, very good input and feedback. I think we're doing the right thing there. Um, Another thing that we are very focused on as the OAAA um, and, you know, as an out of home industry is making sure that out of home becomes part of the overall uh, marketing mix and and getting us further upstream into omni-channel media planning. Uh, What advice can you share uh, for our audience and the out-of-home companies here uh, as they think about trying to overcome that? And how do do we become part of the overall uh, media mix and not just seen as 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 a standalone platform or something that's in a silo a little bit to the side? Yeah, I think to to this question, you know, the, the point about programmatic scale really comes into play here. So for so long, I think out of home was seen as the cherry on top to your plan because you had to go and engage one by one in each city uh, with different vendors to kind of figure out where to get your placements. And that didn't allow you to plan proactively in a national way that the rest of your media plan was planned in. Again, I think as we're seeing um, marketplaces continue to grow and develop, um, people being able to access those programmatically, that gives us a point of entry to have truly national reach. And I kind of think of it akin as to the transition that audio went through because audio used to be a very local market by market negotiation. But as soon as that inventory started to be pulled and you could plan it from one space and you could plan it nationally as you do your other media, then it became a natural extension of the media plan. And I would say we're definitely having those conversations with clients now. And what we say to them is, Like, yes, let's do something big and adventurous within out of home, but then let's be smart about how we surround that execution to make sure that we're really getting all of the value out of the big piece that we've just planned. So yes, let's do the, you know, the crazy Times Square takeover, but in order to see full value out of that, let's be smart about how we're using subways or sidewalks or link stations leading up to that so that we're telling a more complete story. Um, And we're not doing something just for the stunt of it, but as a smart integrated piece of the media plan. And I think being able to plan um, in a scaled way really helps us tell that story back to the marketer. Yeah, well, that's great to hear. You know, essentially, I think out of home can be a really great addition to any media plan and can help boost other forms of media and stands well on its own too, for, for a number of reasons that you've already covered. So, so um, I'm glad that that thinking is starting to, to, to take place. I mean, it's certainly, certainly very top of our agenda. Um, 
Final question for you. Uh, the theme of the conference is future proof. Uh, and it's all about sort of how do we build for a solid, more prosperous future for ourselves? And that goes for out of home media companies as well as brands who are who are on this on this um, on this event. So what's your what's your advice for for anyone who's thinking about future proofing future proofing their business um, and and building stronger teams? Oh, and I mean, this is a million dollar question. If I had a proper answer, I would probably be vacationing on an island somewhere. But I, the perspective I tend to take on this one is really just build a business that's planned around change or that's planned around chaos, because those are the only constants. And so building, building a business model or a way of planning or an engagement with your agencies or a media plan that is just wildly flexible and adaptable by nature. Uh, the saying that we have here at M6 is hold the objective really tight, but the path to get there very loosely, which is be very clear on what you want your end result to be, but don't be precious about how you get there because you know it's just going to change and you've got to kind of build that that ethos, yeah. that way of working. Yeah. Yeah, true. And in my case, learn how to say future proof, uh, especially if you're going to call your conference that. Uh, Belinda, thank you so much for being here with us today. It was great to be on stage with you again and and, and working with you and, and seeing you. Um, I want to congratulate you on your future success and, and industry leadership that started way before 2014 and, and will go far into the future. Uh, thanks again. Thank you so much. It was really wonderful to be here. I enjoyed it.